Hello, let's take a few minutes and let me kind of walk you through the 11 steps on this page. It's like, oh my gosh, 11 steps. Well, I try to make them very specific. Okay, so here's what I want you to do. We are going to conduct a little um, minuscule collection evaluation. And we're going to do it this way. So the first thing that you need to do is to click the link to go to this library media program evaluation page. And it looks like this should be what you're directed to. Right. And when you get to this page, um, I encourage you to open it in a different window or a different tab. And you can please feel free to read through, um, see what they talk about, the information about. It's all about evaluation, steps in evaluation, things that you've probably seen on the resources page as well. It's not a lot different, but what I really want us to focus on is this section down here, the make it real section. All right, so that's where we're going to look, and that's what the next step says. It says, um, scroll to the bottom of the page to the make it real section, and then step three, read through the annual report pages provided. So when you're on that page, there are, um, it says begin by looking at the annual report created by Robin Young, and she created it as part of a newsletter for the library media program. So this is this is seven different pages of a new of a newsletter. I want you to look through each one of those and just kind of maybe jot some notes about okay, if I was doing an evaluation, I might use that or I wouldn't don't think I'd use that. I'd do this instead. Okay? Just jotting down some ideas for how you would report because here this piece, okay? Create a plan for the types of evaluation and reporting that you would do as a teacher librarian. I'm going to ask you to do that. After you've gone through all the steps, that's your final step. Step 10 is to do that piece. All right. So as you're looking through each of these pages, jotting some notes, getting some ideas. Oh, that's a good idea. You know, that's a good way to present how I'm using graphic novels. Or this is a good way to present how there's teacher collaboration going on with the library. Um, this is a good idea for showing what kind of books students are checking out, all right? Or instead of doing, instead of presenting the information about testing in this way, I would do it this way. Or instead of a newsletter, while it's kind of nice, I would use this instead, all right? So make yourself some notes. Okay, so that's the first three steps of the process. Okay, step four. I want you to open the document. It's called thir it's a 13-point checklist. Now, don't freak out because we're not doing all 13 points here. We're going to do one of the points. What this is, and it's really kind of nice, it's a checklist, a program checklist for school principals. It's something to give your principal say, hey, here's what the library media, this is what we should be doing. These are the kind of things, this is why we're valuable. Are we doing this? And starting a conversation with administration, right? But what I want us to do is I want us to look at each point to say, hey, how does my knowledge stack up with this? If, if I were the teacher librarian or the school librarian and I had to talk to my principal about all this stuff, would I know? So that's a lot of what we're going to be doing, not just during this collection development phase, but during the entire program and, and a lot of this class, okay? So we're going down here and we're going to look at, whoops, Number three, collection size and development. So there's five questions here. And I just want you to think about. We're not going to provide the answers to these questions. We're just going to think about them and how might we answer those questions. What do we have to do to find the answers to answer those questions? So it's, it's the how. It's not the actual answer that I'm concerned about in this lesson, what we're doing. It's the how. How do I answer those? What do I need to do to be able to come back to the principal and say thus first one? Yes, our collection meets the needs of the curriculum, and here's why. Here's what I've done to, to, to show you why it aligns, why it works. Here's what we're doing, all right? Excuse me. So, think about the how. All right, so you've opened the document. You've looked at the questions. You, you're kind of keeping them in mind as you do the rest of this exercise. So, back to the page. All right, so, you've, oh my goodness, excuse me, um, open the attached document, you've gone to number three, looked at the questions. All right, now, 
There's one more document to open, and it's called the Collection Assessment Overview. What it is, it's just a little chart. And this little chart, I'll make it bigger here. It is a chart that allows you, okay, you're going to look at nonfiction, you're going to look at fiction, and we're not going to look at everything. Okay, I'm going to leave this up to you on what you want to look at. Okay, if you, there's four blanks here. Down here in fiction, it's kind of set up with, with five different things. But I want you to kind of customize this to your library that you're working in. So if there's more than five nonfiction topics you want to check out or examine, that's fine. If there are more, maybe you work in a high school library or and um, there's no picture books. Okay, so picture books are not relevant for your library. What is? Add that in there. And then see what it looks like in your library. Okay, so this document, you, you've opened this document. This is a place to record some things that you notice. Now, we're going to go back. And we're going to use, step seven says, using that document that we just opened. Okay. Check your school's library catalog. So for me, that would mean I'm going to go to Pitt State to the IRC. This is our catalog. And I'm going to do a little bit of searching, probably by subjects, of some items that I think maybe should be part of the collection. Um, maybe authors that I am interested in seeing if they're there, award-winning books, that kind of thing, just to see how robust the collection is. All right, so you're going to go through, and you're going to use your school's Whoops, I apologize, we're to the wrong page. Oh, uh -huh. Okay, so you're going to use your school's catalog to just do a, just do a cursory search of some, some items that, you know, spring to your head. Maybe you want to tag Newberry winning authors. You probably have to look up and see who those are. Um, maybe you want to see what um, the balance maybe is between, like, fantasy and realistic fiction. Maybe you want to know in your how is your nonfiction section, the dates, the 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 currentness of perhaps the science books, especially related to space, or the social studies books in relation to the civil rights movement, those kinds of things. Um, are there books about the Muslim religion? Are there books about any religion? Are there books about that, sir, that give an alternate perspective of the um, history of westward expansion in the United States. So that you have some, some different perspectives to present to students. Whatever, just some, some items that you think should be part of the collection. If you were the school librarian and you're kind of aligned to the curriculum and Common Core and all that, okay, so use this document just to help you with the organization. That's what it's there for. Okay. So maybe your nonfiction topic, maybe you've decided you want to look at um, westward expansion in the U.S. All right. So you go and you, you search that. Okay, so how many items are there? How many online resources are there? How many say 25? Um... And as you look, oh, it's pretty okay, but could use uh, more upper level. Um, could use more very perspective. And then you might make any comments or notes that you want to. Um, I would like to add um, works that... Focus on the Native American viewpoint, um, etc., etc. Okay, so just add those notes, and then same thing down here. Say um, I'm in Kansas. Okay, so how many books by Kansas authors do I have? Are the levels okay for what I'm teaching? And then any comments about that? Do we need to add any? Do we need to look, or maybe we add um, award-winning novels? Okay, so. How, or not, not just novels, but books. So what does our collection look like with respect to award-winning works? So just kind of add that to this, this document. 
This is yours. It's a working document for you. There is a place up here to put your school name, so you just kind of know who you are. All right. So you're going through your collection, doing that. Now, step A, and you can do that. Hopefully, usually anymore, the library catalog is um, web-based, like mine for the IRC is web-based. So you could probably do that from anywhere. You'll just need to know what the website is. Um, I don't know, maybe at your school you have to go actually to the library to use that. I don't know, but I want you to do that little search in your library catalog. All right, then step eight. I want you to talk to your librarian, and I want you to tell them. In my cataloging class, we're focusing right now on collection development. I'm kind of learning what it is, and we're talking about collection evaluation. I would like to walk around the library and just kind of get a sense for what we, what's, on the, what's in the stacks, um, the condition, that kind of thing. I'm not doing this. I'm not, we're not critiquing or anything like that. That's not what my professor wants us to do. All I'm doing is just kind of getting a sense of what it be, would be like if I was a librarian and I was evaluating the collection for the first time. What would I do? What would I see? Just making some observations. Okay. Just very nicely. They'll probably say, okay, I hope so. If they don't, and they, if they'd rather you not, you might have to find somebody else that will let you do that. Right? But I want you to actually go to a physical library, probably a school library, and just kind of walk around, just make some notes. If you want to use this document again, that's great. Use this document again to help to jot notes as you go. But as you peruse your library, ask yourself, there are some questions here. So, you're not going to be able to know the answer specifically. But what does it look like? What is the overall age of the collection? How current is it? What's the quality and physical condition of materials available? So when you, when you look, can you, how, how do things, how do, you know, how do the books look, et cetera, et cetera. And what's the scope? of materials. Is there a lot available? Are there a few things available? Um, are there more electronic or electronic resources than print resources, especially with nonfiction and reference and whatever? Okay, so how broad is the collection? And then how's the library how's the physical space organized? What does it look like? Does it make sense to you? Alright? And for your patrons and for the people who are actually using the library. Okay. Does it meet the needs of the curriculum? You know, as a teacher, you, you kind of know curriculum. Maybe not inside and outside, but you have a good idea. So as you look, what do you think? Does it, is it meeting the needs of the curriculum? Okay. Have online and electronic resources been added? And is there enough equipment to handle those resources when there's a class that wants to come in and all that? Okay. And then... Have we taken some of our print materials, encyclopedias, dictionaries, all that, what uh, reference materials, nonfiction, maybe some fiction, I don't know, and replace those with online subscriptions? And if we have, how have we repurposed the space where those used to reside? Okay, so you might not have bullet but some of these questions kind of bleed into the other questions, but keep these in mind as you're, as you're walking around observing the collection in the library. And remember, we're not doing this as a critique. I'm not going to send you to your librarian and say, this is what's wrong, and this is what's wrong, and you need to change this, and you need to do this, and you need to do that. No, that's not the object of this exercise. The object of this exercise is for you to just practice the evaluation skills. Noticing, looking, making notes. And we're not going to run reports. I'm not have you run reports off of the libraries system or anything like that you're not going I'm not going to ask you to ask the librarian for circulation statistics or anything like that We're, you're going to do just by searching the catalog what do you see so if, as a user and again and then walking around the library what do you notice so just making some observations getting a little of the basics of the evaluation process because that would be and should be one of the things, first things you do as a new librarian, you want to become familiar with your collection. And part of becoming familiar with it, as you become familiar with it, you'll be evaluating it. You want, oh look, 
there's the Harry Potter series, but I see that we've got like three of every title except The Order of the Phoenix. I wonder why we don't have three of that title. Is it not as popular? Does it not get checked out as much? What's the reason? Or has it been lost? What's happened there? Do I need to replace that? Okay. Or I noticed we our, our section on space exploration seems to be outdated a little bit. Um, the, the most current copyright date is 2000. Maybe we need to look and see if there's, are there electronic resources that have replaced those. So do I need those out on the shelves? So just getting familiar with the collection. Okay, so you've looked through the evaluation materials that have been provided. Look through how they've reported with that newsletter and made some notes about, okay, I like this, I don't like that, I'd, I'd use that, I wouldn't use that, I would do this instead. You have checked out those thir that 13-point checklist and looked at point number three. And then as you've searched the library catalog and wandered the library stacks, you've made some notes about the questions I've presented and also used the collection assessment document here to make notes and ideas about the collection. Right. So then step 10, after going through all first steps 1 through 9, okay, now I want you to draft a plan for what kind of evaluation and reporting you might do if you were the school librarian. So you're the librarian, you need to conduct an evaluation, what would you do? So, first one, and just each of these, summarize your findings from 1 through 9. Summarize. Can be bullet points. Okay, you, this this section here, step ten, can be presented however you feel makes most sense for you. Not for me, for you. All right. So summarize your findings. Then, what other questions and evaluations might be done? And I gave you a little hint there because we never talked above about you know how do you find out what did the patrons want, what do they need, what do they desire, kind of thing. That's talked about as you read in your textbook. All right. Then I want you to detail how you might answer point three on that 13 point checklist. Not what the answers are, but how might you address the answers. So if the principal came to you and said, hey, let's talk about these six questions. How would you go about finding the answers to those questions and present those answers to someone. And the next, outline how you would report results of a collection evaluation to your school and community. That goes back to that newsletter that I'm going to have you look at. Is that what you would do? What would you do different? Okay. So what's the, what's the best way to do that? Do you think for your library community and last but not least, this is a draft. It's not going to be final. You're not going to get A, B, C, D, F on this, okay? Because we're going to keep adding to this as we proceed through each piece of the collection development process. So step 11, I want you to submit your draft. There's an assignment place for you to submit that draft. You will get points for completing that part of the assignment, and you'll also get feedback for how to improve it, what needs to be added, maybe you got too much of this, not enough of that, etc., etc. Excuse me. And then we're going to keep adding to that draft. So what's going to happen by the end of the collection development module, I hope, my, my, um, my plan is for you to have a good process piece so that when you do become, or maybe some of you are now, a school librarian, you'll have a process in place that can help you evaluate and add to and understand collection development so that you can create a good, solid, living collection for the school that you're going to be working at. Right. Now, I hope this is clearer than mud. I hope you understand what I want. Again, your draft to me that I don't have a template that I want you to use. There's no specific format for you to give it to me. 
what makes sense to you, organize it in that manner, and submit it, and then we'll work through that. Again, we're going to keep, it's going to be a working document, and we're going to do this for the next several weeks by adding and um, editing and working together. All right? Okay. Let's hit it.